Pas de péri. Let's settle a debate, shall we? Fluted walls, what are they? What do they sound like? And how do you achieve them in your house without spending a fortune? Good news, we're gonna tell you. Ah, that plate de Berry. Oh, sorry, that's French. Wait for it. Plaster de Berry. <laughs> smells like it's ready to go. Wait for it. <coughs> Stronger bones. Come on, old girl. And we're back. So we wanted to do a fluted wall wainscot in this room. And we didn't want to pay someone to make a custom wainscot fluted wall for us. So in true refresh fashion, we decided to do it ourselves. So the first thing we did was to create a mold or a relief of the fluted pattern out of vinyl. Now, if we wanted something that was going to be perfect and straight, we could have bought panels or we could have cut dowels in half, but what we were going for was something more organic, more handmade, and this DAP Plaster of Paris is perfect for that. So after applying a few thick coats of the Plaster of Paris to the wall, we ran our trowel, our homemade trowel or our fluted template, along the wall and created grooves where we wanted the flutes to be. And the trick here is just to try to keep it as straight as possible. But if you do this method, you should know that it's not going to be perfect. It's going to give you a hand done, um, let's call it a, uh, quite honestly, we don't know what to call it. We just wanted it to look hand done and imperfect. And since we did it by hand and it does not look perfect, mission accomplished. It's important to note that when working with this plaster of Paris, it's got a very, very short working time. So that's why we used it for the thicker portions of the wall. And when it came to doing the smaller imperfections, we filled those with the ready mixed plaster of Paris that comes in a smaller tub. So you'll notice that we ran our fluted pattern higher than we needed it. And then we went back and marked our final position for our top. And then we went and cut all of that off using a multi-tool and then peeled the remaining pieces of the fluted plaster off with a trowel. I Good job. Good job, Dan. Well done. We did the same for the baseboard so that the baseboard could slide underneath and it would look better. <laughs> <laughs> so that it looked the same depth. Basically, we wanted the baseboard to be slightly proud, but not immensely proud. We're immensely proud, though. Looks great. So at this point, we decided to throw some color on the walls because it needed it, and so did the ceiling. So we applied the same paint to the wall, to the fluted plaster, to the baseboards. The whole room got a coat of this textured wall that we ended up changing. But don't, that, don't you pay that any mind. That's another video. Is anyone, is anyone even still here? Is people, are don't people, worry about it. Just keep going. People into this? I'd like to reiterate that this was supposed to be an imperfect wall. We wanted this to look very natural, not perfect. That's why we didn't buy a fluted panel and put it on ourselves. And when it was all said and done with this dead flat paint from Farrow and Ball, we actually were quite pleased with how it looked. But not pleased enough to <laughs> not add chalk paint to it. But we decided that we wanted it to be even more matte and more chalky. There's another video for that. Don't worry about this. There's another video that's on our page that will tell you how to do the chalk paint part if you're into that kind of thing. Unless this video comes first. Eventually, they'll both be. Done. This is the room. This is what the fluted panel looks like when it's all said and done. And if you listen very closely, you might just hear the flute playing a little ditty all day long. Shh. Library voices. Boy, we should have created quite a reading nook thanks to Dap and those chalky walls and those fluted panels. But that's all for today. Check back in later. Later, not now.